Mr. Trushenko the Toymaker by Grace McLean. Mr. Trushenko was a toy maker. His father had been a toy maker, his father's father, and his father's father before that. Mr. Trushenko made big toys and little toys, tall toys and short toys, sad toys and happy toys, toys for babies, toys for girls, and toys for boys. Shelf upon shelf, row upon row. Mr. Trushenko made the most wonderful toys anyone had seen and all sorts of people. From near and far came to Galilee. Sometimes even in secret. This was all the more remarkable because Mr. Trushenko did not like people. And they didn't like him very much. When he went by, the townsfolk whispered and laughed. Don't look at him too long or you'll turn to stone, they said. Mr. Trushenko did not like going out. But he didn't like staying home either. Though his house was full of fine things, to Mr. Trushenko it felt empty. Sometimes, in the evening, he got up and went into the shop and gazed at the shelf upon shelf of moonlit eyes, lips and faces. The only time Mr. Trushenko was content was when he was in his workshop. There, mending a broken doll or carving a tiny face, his smile was tender, his eyes gentler than the townspeople would have believed possible. One day, Mr. Trushenko was serving a customer when something caught his eye. Standing outside the shop was a small beggar boy. He was gazing at something in the shop window so intently he didn't notice anything else. Mr. Trushenko peered closer. The little boy was staring at a bear with golden fur and smiling eyes. After that, the beggar boy came back each day. He arrived early and stayed till late into the evening. He didn't seem to notice that children jeered and threw stones at him, that people held their noses or stepped around him, or whether or not anyone put coins in his cup. Just to be close to the golden bear was enough. Mr. Trushenko felt angrier and angrier. The golden bear was one of the finest toys he had ever made. It was fit for a prince, not a dirty beggar boy, who put off his customers. And there was something else about the boy that disturbed Mr. Trushenko. The boy reminded him of someone. Someone Mr. Trushenko would rather forget. Finally, one snowy day, not long before Christmas, Mr. Trushenko could bear it no longer. Go away, he roared. There is nothing here for you. That night, Mr. Trushenko could not sleep. When he shut his eyes, he saw the beggar boy's face. At last, he lit a candle. There was only one thing to be done. He would give the golden bear to the beggar boy. He went down to the shop, took the bear from the window and put it into a brown paper bag. It's an awful waste, of course, he said to himself, but I can't see any other way to get rid of him. The next morning, Mr. Trushenko's head ached. He could not remember when he had had such a bad night. He could not remember the last time he had given someone a gift, either. For a moment, as he washed, he thought of putting the bear back. Then he remembered the boy's face when he shouted at him. 
But though Mr. Shushenko waited for the boy all that day, he didn't arrive. He didn't appear the next day either, or the next. When the beggar boy had not appeared for over a week, Mr. Trushenko went to ask if anyone knew where he was. He felt irritated, but also alarmed. The boy was ill, people told him. He'd been found in the snow. The orphanage had taken him in, but it was doubtful whether he would survive. A cold hand clutched Trushenko's heart. It was because of him. He knew it. He should not have shouted at the boy. Where is the orphanage, he said. When Mr. Trushenko arrived at the orphanage, a nurse showed him to a small bed where the beggar boy lay as if dead. Let me take care of him, Trushenko said, and the nurse, who already had too many children to care for, was only too glad to let him. For many weeks, Mr. Shushenko took care of the beggar boy. Strangely, although Mr. Shushenko was exhausted, he could not remember a time when he felt happier. Christmas came and went. Then the new year. The townspeople whispered and wondered. Then one day, when weak spring sunshine was coming through the window, Mr. Trushenko gave the beggar boy a present wrapped in finest tissue. Now, when Mr. Trushenko went out with the beggar boy, the townspeople still whispered, and they still stared. But they said, fancy, Trushenko has a heart after all. They said, Trushenko is an angel. They said, Trushenko is a saint. And some of them said, the toy maker has done what none of us would. Mothers smiled at him, men touched their caps. Old women took his hands and blessed him. Some gave him groceries, some flowers, another fresh eggs. Mr. Trushenko didn't feel sad in his house anymore. Now he had someone to share his fine things with. Happier at home, he was happier at work. His customers didn't know what had come over him. And as for the beggar boy, the world was a new one. Each day was filled with busyness, and each day with light. And at the end of the all, in a room filled with toys, Trushenko, the beggar boy, and the golden bear read together as day became night.